pregame and postgame. It must be good luck for you to do it. Um, we'll start with Mark up front. Alice, can you talk about the home run, what your thoughts were circling the bases, and how big it was given the hell that was it for the offense with, it, with the, the score that it was? Yeah, it was just um, – Sorry, I was uh, I was fortunate enough to get that at bat because Jordan hustled down the line. He he plays he plays the game hard, and um, you know just trying to trying to square up a ball is, is tough off of him. He's one of the best pitchers in the game, and uh, missed under a few fastballs, and um, was fortunate enough to swear kind of square that one up um, and uh, give us the lead. Uh, Daniel in the second row. Alex, I know this might sound a little obvious, but just how important are home runs to what you guys are doing offensively, especially in the postseason? I think it's accounted for most of you guys' run production, even dating back to the Seattle series. Yeah, um, I feel like we we want to create um, runs in many different ways, but sometimes it's the home run. Um, they got a really tough pitching staff over there, and they're really good. So um, just trying to scratch and claw and battle and, and try and fight. Uh, we'll go to Christy on the left, Alex. Alex, how big is it for you guys to be up 2-0 heading to their their park for two, maybe three more games? Yeah, I think uh, I think we did a good job um, the first two games, and just got to keep playing hard, keep uh, keep competing. Uh, it's fun playing in the postseason. Um, great atmosphere here, great atmosphere there, and um, just looking forward to continue to compete. On the second row on your left. Hey, Alex. Uh, you raised both your slugging and your OPS about 100 points from the first half through the second half. What kind of sparked that change in your season? Anything you can kind of point to? Yeah, uh, landing closed. <laughs> I, I've been landing open uh, for like two years, kind of. So I needed to fix some mechanical things. Um, my front side was kind of flying off the off the baseball when I had swing. So, um, you know, just during the All-Star break, really got in the cage and really got after it and tried to uh, – Try to get mechanically sound. Um, feeling healthy this year, um, and that's a big thanks to our training staff and strength and conditioning coaches. And I'm just uh, just fortunate enough to continue to compete on this ball club, man. Well, I, I knew I was doing it for the last two years. I just couldn't fix it, or I would have. But uh, we we did some different drills um, in the cage so I could feel it. Um, still today, I did it on on the the changeup. I kind of came off of it a little bit, but, you know, just focusing on uh, the mechanics with uh, our hitting coaches and, and trying to uh, put together some good at-bats. We're going to welcome Framber to join Alex. We'll go to Greg. <laughs> Alex, if I could, your view of Tucker's catch at the wall, which is obviously a play that changes this game. And if, and if you could maybe share, how often do you, we, we've seen him do this and he makes it look routine. Do you appreciate the skill level that, that he employs there? Yeah, to be honest, this is a, this is a series of two of the, probably I think the best, of, well, Mookie as well, but two of the top three probably right fielders defensively in the game of baseball. Um, Judge and Tucker both make incredible plays in right field. So like you said, we've seen Tucker do that a lot. Um, but... Uh, He's uh, he's a great defender. He really is. Uh, far back on your right, Chandler. Alex, and then I'd like Fromber to weigh on this too. Alex, what did you? What was that mound visit like after Fromber threw away Giancarlo's ball in the fourth inning? Kind of what did you do to kind of settle him down? And then Fromber, how did you kind of collect yourself after that and come back to to get out of that inning? Actually, when we got to the when we got to the mound, uh, Fromber was just ready to, to continue compete. Uh, we just said let's not. Let's not let this be a big inning. Let's just continue to execute pitches and do exactly what uh, you do. And, and every time he takes the mound, um, we have a lot of confidence in him. And, and he, uh, he, competed, he competed all night. And uh, it's just super, super happy for him and, and how he pitched. And he, he did a great job. Robert? No, yo simplemente, claramente, Reconocí que la fallé ahí, me, eh, me emocioné, no, me confié en ese, en ese rolling para el doble play, no logré sacar ni un out, bajaron dos carreras, pero eso simplemente me enfoqué, saqué mi tres out y pude conseguir un séptimo inning con dos carreras y pudimos mantener el juego hasta el final.
Yeah, just because I'm in mind right there. I, I would admit, I think in that moment, I got a little bit too confident with that ground ball, and I didn't get anybody out. Obviously, those two runs scored, but thankfully, I was able to get locked in again, get out of that inning, and continue pitching, do a good job. Uh, Danielle, on your right guess. Framber, what was your overall approach against Aaron Judge tonight, especially in that fifth inning at bat where you got him uh, to, to fly out to, to Tucker? Uh, mi, plan, mi plan siempre ha sido el mismo. Desde que lo he enfrentado a ellos, tirar strike, atacar la zona, tirar mi bueno picheo como curva, cambio, reta, sinker. Y simplemente tirar strike y saber localizar los picheos para sacarle agua a cualquier oponente. I think my plan of attack against them has been the same one all year. It's just to tackle them in the strike zone, throw my good pitches in the strike zone, my curve, my change up, my fast, my sinker. Just being able to locate those pitches well in the strike zone, and that's what I've been able to do all year. Uh, Kim up front here. Hey, um, Alex, can you talk about playing with the roof open? That's kind of rare here. Does it change anything for how you guys you know, approach and go out to the game? Um. It's tough to tell. Every time it's open, it's it's a little bit different. But um, just one of those things. Uh, you just gotta you just gotta play. Uh, Jesus. <clears throat> Framber, quería hablar sobre la madurez que has enseñado tú, pero también de Abreu, lo que enseñó hoy y la madurez. Framber, I'd like to ask you about the maturation process that you've shown over the last years and that Abreu has shown recently. Uh, primeramente por Abreu, uh, no ha emocionado mucho el equipo y no ha llegado de orgullo y confianza hacia él de la madurez que ha tenido, uh, del enfoque que ha traído al equipo, lo que le ha demostrado al equipo, lo que ha hecho en el montículo y los hallamos muy bien y nos hemos sentido muy bien con él. Eh, incluso yo también me he enfocado, como siempre digo que trabajo con, con mi psicólogo personal para mantenerme enfocado en el juego, hacer mi cosa como tengo que hacerla. Y siempre está, no importa la situación como la de hoy, mantenerte enfocado y tratar de que el equipo se mantenga ganando. Yeah, first to start with the prayer, I think we are all very excited to have him here. He's matured a ton and he's definitely helped the team a lot throughout the season. And even now, in terms of uh, for me, I think I've just been trying to stay focused. Like I said, I've been working with my personal psychologist all season. And I think he's definitely helped me a lot to be able to stay focused throughout the whole year. Is there a last question or two for Alex before we go to Fromber? We'll go up front here, um, and then we'll go. We'll let Alex go and focus on Fromber. Alex, that uh, one-run games like this, any one play can change things. That play at the end of the sixth inning that you obviously directed towards Jeremy. Uh, what did you think of the play that he made to finish that off? It was awesome. Uh, he was he, he was in the right spot at the right time, um, and uh, made a strong throw across the diamond. Um, Sometimes you you got to get the ball to bounce your way, and right there on that play, it did. Uh, Alex, thanks a lot for coming in. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. it. Congratulations. Yeah. Let's see a couple more for Fromber. Uh, the third row on your left. You fell behind a lot the first time through the order, but the strike out of Bader to end the third, did you feel like you started to get into a rhythm at that point? Eh, caíste por debajo de muchos de los bateadores la primera parte por, por la alineación de ellos. Pudiste ponchar a Bader en el tercer inning. ¿Pensaste que eso te ayudó a caer en un buen ritmo? Uh, pienso que sí. Le caí por debajo a varios bateadores, uh, pero como digo, lo importante de mantener el ritmo, de enfocarse, de respirar en medio de, de cada picheo, pude sacarlo de ajo y a pesar de que me caí por abajo, seguí el mismo enfoque y pude tirar mi bola de strike y mantener el juego hasta el séptimo. Yeah, definitely. I, I fell behind a lot of a, a lot of the hitters the first time through, but I, like I said, I think the biggest thing is just trying to stay focused, just breathing in between pitches to be able to get blocked back, back in. And again, thankfully because of that, I was able to get through seven innings today. Uh, other questions, Chandler, and your right guys. Fromber, what if anything was different about your curveball the second, third time through the order? It really looked like it, it got a lot better as the game went on. Hubo algo diferente sobre tu curva la segunda y tercera vez de la línea de yo que se vio como que mejoró mucho. Uh, sí mejoró mucho, pero me sentí, en el primer inning, segundo me sentí un poco, un poco como todavía frío en el partido. El techo estaba abierto, o sea, estamos impuestos en casa a jugar con el techo cerrado, siempre estamos calientes. Pero me sentí un poco frío, calenté bien, calenté bien y pude ejecutar mi curva a partir del tercer inning hasta el séptimo. Y nada, ajuste que uno hace en medio del juego. Yeah, I think the first few innings I felt I was still a little bit cold, I wasn't fully warmed up. You know, the roof was open. It's something that we're not used to playing with usually here. 
But I think after that inning, I was able to warm up properly, and then the curveball got a lot better from the third through seventh inning. But you know, those are all adjustments that we make in the middle of the game, and thankfully, we did it. We'll do two more for Fromber, Christy. Fromber, you you talk so much about your growth and maturation over the past few years, and all the work you've done, like on your mental game. I wondered if you think three or four years ago, if what happened in the fourth inning would have happened, if you would have been able to shake it off and finish as strong as you did tonight. Tú has hablado, has hablado mucho sobre tu madurez y tu enfoque. ¿Tú piensas que lo que pasó en el tercer inning, en el cuarto inning, hubiera pasado hace cuatro años atrás que pudiera rebotar y seguir pichando como pichaste hoy? Uh, en realidad, siendo uh, razonable, no había seguido. 2019, 2019 no había continuado en el partido. Estuviera allá afuera, uh, estuviera ya desenfocado, estuviera allá afuera del partido en el cuarto. Pero como con el transcurso del tiempo uno madura, Uno trabaja para perfeccionarse en el juego y enfocarse en esas situaciones como la de hoy. Son cosas que te mejoran y hacen que tú tengas más valor jugando el béisbol. Yeah, to be quite honest, I think back in 2019, I would, probably would have been done with the game. I probably would have lost all focus there at, the, at that moment. But, you know, those are all things that we work out on and just continue working, working hard to be able to focus better, focus better and get better in the game. But, yeah, definitely I don't think it would have happened for a couple of years ago. Other questions for Fromber? All right, Frommer, congratulations. Generally, thank you very much. Appreciate it.